Bitcoin just dip down below the short term holder price. What does that mean for Bitcoin? And yes, in Europe, they want to get rid of USDT through the Mika law. What does this mean for the industry in Europe? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. In two days, of course, talking about the news, as there is a, two amazing news items and one special warning for a lot of people of CoinStats. So please watch this part of the video. Of course, analyzing the charts as we just saw a huge dip down below the short term holiday price. And of course, yes, answering the question of one of the followers and an inspirational quote at the end. So let's quickly jump now into the news because there is some big news I want to share with all of you guys. The first news item for today is that the Winklevoss twins just pledged $2 million to support Trump because they want to fight against Biden and the anti-Bitcoin war. Because the Winklevoss twins are real hardcore Bitcoiners for who don't know them, please Google them. But they have been into Bitcoin from the beginning and they have a shitload of Bitcoin guys and they're supporting Trump because they want a Bitcoin-minded America. So as far as I read this morning again, the updated version of the news is that they already gave $2 million worth of Bitcoin to Trump's campaign, but now they receive a little bit back because it's maximum 800,000 US dollar per person that you can deposit to a campaign of a president. So yes, maximum 800,000 US dollars. So that's like 1.6 million US dollar they are like giving to Trump to run his campaign to win from the anti-Bitcoin Biden guys. And I think it's huge news that Bitcoin is still being discussed in the White House guys. People like presidents guys are now even talking about Bitcoin and are even accepting Bitcoin as a donation to run for president guys. Who did ever believe that, that would happen? Presidents of the United States discussing Bitcoin and even accepting donations for their campaigns in Bitcoin. So they would be sending around 15.47 Bitcoin at the moment that that article was going live and Bitcoin just dipped. So they will probably be sending a little bit more than 15 Bitcoin if they are allowed to send $1 million each. If not, it will be a little bit less. But the important part of the news, of course, is, is that the Winklevoss twins are telling the Bitcoin community, come on, let's all support Trump because he will create a positive Bitcoin-minded United States. The second news is an update about uh, Kraken and Certic. Kraken has received the $3 million worth of USDT and Bitcoin back from Certic. So Certic is back to the normal business again, auditing uh, projects for their safety, not in the hacking business anymore. Maybe still white hat hacking, but at least they gave the $3 million back to Kraken, which is a positive outcome for that whole discussion that we saw between Kraken and Certic. So let's move on, guys. Let's go into the next part of the bull market after the summer. Yes, we will have some rest period now. But I will talk about that later in the charts. And then there is a third very important news item. I need to warn all of the people that use CoinStats as their app to track their portfolio. Because CoinStats just had a breach. They were breached. It was 1,500 addresses were affected. That's only 1.3% of all the addresses that are affected uh, now at CoinStats. Please check the list on Google if your wallet is on that list because scammers are probably going to contact all the owners that they can find uh, of that list if they can find them but if they will find the owners of that list probably scammers will contact you to tell you hey we can help and fix the problem hey we can help and get you your crypto back or whatever it is we don't know how big the breach is we don't know if there is token stolen we don't know nothing yet but just a huge warning, if you're using CoinStats, that app that millions of people are using worldwide, if you are using that, there's 1,500 addresses that are being affected, please check that list. If you're on the list, don't reply to any of the scammers that will try to convince you that they are CoinStats and they are helping you. They just want to scam you for all your tokens. Be warned. Now that we have seen all the news, guys, let's see how that will affect the charts. Let's quickly jump into the charts to show you what is happening to Bitcoin and where the massive support levels are for Bitcoin. The first chart for today, guys, is this uh, four hour chart that we always start on and we can see we did lose that massive support level. There is 63,000 that I drew on the chart. Now the question is, where are we gonna fall to? We already fell to 62,100-ish levels, which is the 
massive area of support as well. If you look to the left over here, you can see that that support can even go a little bit lower to 61 to 60K. Uh, there is a lot of volume you can see over here. So if you break this volume, yes, we can fall lower, guys. We can fall lower. It's not the end of the bull market. I will come back to that later but we can fall lower. And we can also see in the trading uh, indicator setup here, it was a buy signal with a lot of blue in the bottom. The blue line was, was like not really crossing that Y line, so it was not like a really good buy signal. We saw the yellow stepping line very flat, or even going downwards. So yes, the sell signal, a short, was a very valid one, but that uh, buy signal was not valid. Now, let's zoom out to the daily because I want to show you something on the daily, how you can see these support levels. Now. This is the daily chart, guys. On this daily chart, you will see now those three lines. Those three lines I already drew a couple of weeks ago. If you're watching my videos, you know that they are on there for a long term already. And I told you, yes, this yellow line on the daily at a 62K level, that will be support. Why? Because we hit that line many times in the past. We did hit that line again now. So how can you find these levels, guys, of support? Now, let's start over here um, with the zero line, for example, and we go over here to the one line, for example, over there. This is one, this is zero. You can also do it the other way around, of course, uh, from zero to one, whatever you prefer. But if I do this, then you will see on the chart that this line is exactly the 0.618 Fibonacci retracement line. This was the 0.51, this was the 0.3, one. So there's a lot of confluence on the charts when it comes to Fibonacci retracements. We will always fall to these levels. The next level in the Fibonacci retracement is to the 0.786 level, which is around 59,000 US dollar. The level between 0.5 and 0.6 is normally the golden pocket they refer to. There's normally the massive area of support. So this area is a very important area. We need to hold the 0.618 line and that's around 62,000 US dollar. If you hold that line, that is very, very, very positive for Bitcoin, guys. And that is how you can use the Fibonacci retracement tool on the chart, guys. Now, there is another thing that we can look at. Why are we dipping so far? We can always look at coin glass, for example, here at the liquidation heat map. And we can see there is a lot of liquidations in this level of 62,300-ish, even a little bit lower here at 61, and even a little bit lower on 60K levels, there's a lot of liquidations. Also, the other way around, when we go to the top, 68k 66k 65k a lot of liquidations so if you pick up all that liquidity over here we will probably bounce again to liquidate all the liquidity that is over there guys that is how bitcoin moves this is the bybit chart we can also look at the binance chart that will probably show the uh, exactly the same image yeah you see again here again here again there all of these levels that we will hit during this boring period now in the Bitcoin charts. Now, let's quickly jump into some more amazing charts. This chart, for example, guys, uh, might seem very bearish to you, uh, but it is also at the same time bullish. The bearish part is that we are gonna hit a level here, 48 to 50K level in this chart. And then we are gonna take off to 440,000 US dollar in this chart. Yes, the chart is upside down. So indeed, it's gonna be a little bit more retracement that's the bearish chart, guys, all to this level over there, which I, I don't see happening, 48,000. But this is a bearish move that I also need to share with you because some people do see this happening. Now, we could move to that 48 to 50K level before we take off to above 100K again. That could be a move on the charts. I don't see this move happening. I think we already tested that line over there and we are already in the next part of the bull market. So I don't see that we will go back to this line again before we go into the bear market. But who knows, guys, maybe I am completely wrong. That's why I share also the opinion of other people. There is people expecting us to go to 48,000 US dollar. Again, this chart is upside down, zero on the top and 760,000 US dollar per Bitcoin in the bottom. Just analyze the chart, pause the video, and you will see how the chart is moving, guys. So here we have a lower high, a lower high, a lower high, lower high, and we have lower lows. So it works completely the other way around. Just pause it if you find it interesting to analyze it a bit more. Then we have this chart. This chart will also help you to understand the huge difference between looking short term, the next six weeks, yes, also, this chart is showing us, yeah, we could drop to 56,000 US dollar over here. We are now here at that 60K level. We could come up again and we could fall even lower to these levels before we come up again with that green part over there. 
This is what you look at for the next six weeks. This is a short term view on Bitcoin. If you zoom out to the next six months, that would be these two small moves over here. There, this is what you're focusing on. Well, you should be focusing on this huge run to 100K or maybe even the run to 200K. That is what you should be focusing on, not on this tiny little part of six weeks. This is not significant. This is nice if you're a trader. This is beautiful if you're an investor. You're investing in Bitcoin because you believe you will reach 100K and maybe even 200K in 2025. So don't zoom in into the charts. Don't look at all the short term time frames, but zoom out and look at that bigger picture, that picture that is important. This is the short term holder realized price. So we can see indeed we uh, fell down below that line, guys. And what does that now mean? Is it really, really bearish? Is it really, really negative? Let's see in the past. Here we found support in that line. The moment we crossed under that line, we fell down with 10% in the price. Here, when we cross under that line, we fell down with 12%, so we had a 12% correction. Here, it was support. Here, we crossed under that line, it was an 8% correction. Now, if we would be crossing under that line, yes, a 10% correction could happen. And if you calculate from 64K prices, 10%, that would mean we would drop to 58,000 US dollar. So yes, the moment we break those lines, we could do what we did in the past, could be only 8%, could be 12%, could be 10%, let's say 10% of 64K is 6,400, so that we would reach 58,000 US dollar as a correction, a couple of percent down below. So that's definitely possible, as you can see on this chart. So don't be freaking out, please zoom out, don't be crying, please start buying, as it is a dip. Don't you think that those people over here were also freaking out? Oh, the price dipped with 10%. Don't you think people like me were buying in that moment and took shitloads of profit a couple of weeks later? Here again, people freaking out. Ah, we are going to die. I was just buying. When the blood is on the streets, I buy. Shitloads of profits. Every time when we hit the line or go down below the line, that's beautiful buying opportunities. You should see it as a buying opportunity, not as a dip, not as a correction, as a buying opportunity. Change your mindset. If you really believe in Bitcoin going above 100K, you should consider all of these supports or even the dips down below it as buying opportunities. I hope you really enjoyed those charts, guys. Yes, short term, that was a shitload of volatility. I can also see a shitload of liquidations coming around that 60K level. There will be moments of more euphoric Feelings again, we will be bouncing, of course, of these levels and going to 64, 65, maybe even 70k. That is just how Bitcoin moves in these cycles. We go sideways for a period of time during the summer, and then after summer, we explode again. And that, of course, brings me to the long term vision. And for the long term, nothing changed. We are still exactly where we need to be in this four year cycle. We just saw the halving in April 2024 between 50 and 150 days, that's two months and five months after the halving, we will be going sideways, a little bit movements and sideways, and then we will explode again into a new part of this bull market. It can also be after 100 days or after 90 days or after 80 days, but on average between 50 and 150 days, we go sideways, boring sideways, and we will be feeling bored. And we will be feeling even, ah, Bitcoin is going nowhere anymore. This was the bull market. It's going to crash to zero. And the news articles will tell you, hey, it's going to crash to zero. Uh, those moments, the blood is on the streets. You should be buying and stop crying. In the crypto tip for today, we are also going to talk about the news because the Bitcoin price just dipped down below the short term holder price. And that is not a good sign. At the moment, the short term holder price is around 64,000 US dollar and we are even dipping to 62,200 US dollar. If we dip even further to 60,000 US dollar, 1.8 billion dollar worth of longs will be liquidated. So that's a huge amount of liquidations that you can also see on the liquidation heat map over here. And we are probably going to hunt for those liquidations to liquidate a share of the people at a 60k level. It's not a good sign in the bull market that the price goes far down below that short term hodder price. Normally we can go down below it a little bit, but we should be bouncing above that line as soon as possible to continue that bull market. And of course, I've been saying this summer will be boring. 
but the summer will be boring in a way that we go between 60 and 70k, 60 and 70k bouncing up and down. June, July, even maybe August, still a little bit boring. Before we take off in September again, after the summer to October, November, December, to create a new autumn high above 74,000 US dollar. So use this summer to add to your portfolio. Buy each and every dip. These dips are for buying, not for crying. Zoom out, look at that bigger picture. We are now at that 60K level that you were dreaming of when we were at 74K. You should be adding to your portfolio because it's definitely not the end of the bull market. It is just the beginning. They are shaking out the weekends. Everyone will be selling now. The wills and the long-term holders and the institutional investors, they will be buying up all those bitcoins from those weak, scary hands that will now be selling because we went to 62,000 US dollar. That's only like 5,000 US dollar below the previous autumn high, that autumn high in 2021 of 67, where we were all at euphoric. We were at 67K. That price is now making people sad and sell their Bitcoins while we're in the midst of a Bitcoin bull market. This is not the end. This is the pause that we always see between 50 and 150 days. So that's between two months and five months after the halving of sideways movements, just a normal market before we take off again. Please remember the bull market already started when Bitcoin was 16,000 US dollar. We had a massive run from 16 to 74. We are cooling down now around 60. We are going sideways for some time before we continue this bull market all the way above 80, 90, maybe even 100,000 US dollar per Bitcoin. So please stop crying, start buying. Then I'm going to answer a question of one of the followers. The question was not from one follower. The question was from thousands of followers this weekend. Didi, what will happen to Bitcoin because Mika law in Europe will make it impossible for exchanges and people to use USDT? I think it was the most asked question during both of my lives on Friday and Saturday. And even in my DMs are exploding because people are now afraid that because USDT will not be possible anymore under this Mika law in Europe, yes, Europe is also trying to kill the Bitcoin and blockchain and other cryptocurrency industry by all their laws. But the question is, what is this going to mean for Bitcoin? A lot of people are afraid at the moment. I can see it in my DMs. People are really afraid. But how can I then still exchange my Bitcoins into a stablecoin back into my bank? Guys, please wake up a little bit. Don't think inside that box that was created for you to live in because of your governments. They want you to be afraid. Because when people live in fear, they are easily to control. So they need you to be in fear. Even the people that were fighting for freedom because of cryptocurrency, they want to make you feel fearful so that you listen to the governments. It's simple. It's not the whole world that is listening to the Mika law. It's not like that all the exchanges stop existing because Mika is there. Mika doesn't matter. You can always sign up, for example, to Blowfin down below with this link. If you sign up to Blowfin, it's non-KYC. You just open a new Gmail address that nobody knows that you just own it. Then you go to Blowfin, you open a trading account over there that nobody knows that it's you, and you're done. You can trade without doing KYC, without doing your proof of address, etc. You can trade with leverage, you can buy a shit out of spot pairs, you can even get bonuses for signing up with my link down below. Special bonus this month, where you can even win the Rolex. And you just trade. You don't give a fuck about that whole Mika system. And you know why? Because you should not be wanting to deposit back Bitcoins to your bank account. Why would you even do that? Why, if you understand Bitcoin, are you looking into the future to sell Bitcoins into, for example, a stablecoin to be able to send that one back to your bank account? Why would you ever want to do this? Why would you want to exchange Bitcoin that has shown you now the return of investment every four year cycle more and more and more? You will be needing less Bitcoins to live your life every four year cycle. Why would you want to exchange Bitcoin to euros or dollars of which now has been proven that you need more every four year cycle to be living life. Inflation. Why would you want to exchange a deflationary asset like Bitcoin for an inflationary asset 
like euros or dollars. That's not the way you should do it. You should live the way we are living as a family. Be all in Bitcoin. Treat Bitcoin as your core capital. That is the capital that will be growing and growing and growing and growing. That's the capital that is deflationary. That's the capital of which you need less and less Bitcoins to keep the same life standard. Why would you exchange that to euros? If you're all in euros and sometimes buying bitcoins to make profits in euros and send those euros to your bank account, then you will have more euros, but because of the inflation, you won't be able to buy more. You won't be able to live the same life standard with those more euros because of the inflation. Those euros are not as valuable as four years ago and as eight years ago and as 10 years ago. You will be able to buy less and less and less in the full future. You should be treating Bitcoin as your core capital. And I do understand your question. How, how, what will it do to Bitcoin? It won't do nothing because it's only the European exchanges, swapping mechanism and all that stuff that are not allowed to use USDT anymore. Probably they will use USDC, probably they will use DAI, probably they will use any other stable coin that will be there. And if they don't use that, then all the users will go to those exchanges that they are allowed to use USDT. Or trade, for example, completely decentralized on a DEX, like Apex Pro Omni now is the best DEX out there. You just connect your wallet, nobody knows it's you, and you start to trade. And yes, you can trade USDT, USDC as well over there. So it's not that difficult. You must just not let that government get into your head and create fear about something that you should not be fearing. Doesn't this remind you to a period two years ago that they also created something in your head that you should be fearing some kind of a flu? and that you did crazy things in your life that if you look back now, you're like, ah, shit, I shouldn't have trusted that government. Now they're doing it again. They are making you fearful about crypto. Don't, uh, you're not, you won't be able to use USDT anymore. Fuck USDT then in Europe. We will use USDC or we will use DAI or we will stay in Bitcoin or you will just exchange Bitcoins to your lovely Euro again. That's always possible. You can sell Bitcoins at Bitonic to Euro. It's a Dutch company where you can do it, for example or B2C direct, you can also sell your Bitcoins there directly to your euros. So it will always be possible, it will always be possible to sell your Bitcoins into your euros. But I just don't understand how the people still can long for please taking profits in euros than the bull market top. Why would you want to take profits in euros if you know those profits will disappear because of the inflation? You can make shitloads of profits in euros. But if you're not able to buy more goods in real life for those euros, that profits is shit. But I guess I just don't understand why people still want to take profits into bank accounts and euros if they understand that Bitcoin each four year cycle goes higher and higher and higher. And I do understand that you want to park your Bitcoins temporarily in the bull market top and buy more Bitcoins back in the bottom. But please don't use a bank account for that. Because if you use a bank account, you won't have the guarantee that you will be able to buy those Bitcoins back in the future. Maybe they will even block all the transactions to exchanges. Keep the money that you have in crypto in crypto. Treat it as your capital. All the rest, if you don't want to have too much risk, your salaries and all that stuff, yeah, keep it in the banking system. But if you have a lot of funds in crypto, stay in crypto. Don't put this back in the traditional monetary system. And at the same time then, that is contributing to your freedom. Because the moment you use their money, they will be in control. The moment you use our money, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, we are in control. And then we come to the inspirational part of the video, guys, the end of the video. Today, I have a beautiful one. If you feel that you're losing everything, please think of a big tree. Trees lose their leaves every year, but they still stand strong to wait for better days. And those leaves will be growing back and it will be a beautiful tree again with leaves. That's how you should also treat life. Sometimes you just feel that you're losing everything. Nothing is going the way you want it to go. Your job is not going the way you want it to go. Your family is not going the way you want to go. Your relationships are not going the way you want to go. Your hobby, your passions, everything is just feels like you're losing everything. Just like those trees lose their leaves every winter, but they still stand tall and they wait for better days to come where they will be beautifully flourishing again with leaves. And that's the same thing that you should be doing. Of course, life is not only positive. If it would only be positive, you wouldn't even know what positive is. We need, we need ups and downs. We need dips to be able to understand 
that a positive feeling is a positive feeling. You need to have a dip before and up. That's how you feel the difference. If you would only feel positive, 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 you would never understand anymore that that is positive. Maybe you would even see that as that dip. You don't know anymore then. There is always a balance in your life and that balance goes up and down. And sometimes you will feel as if you will be losing everything. But on those moments, think of that tree. They lose their leaves every year. They stand tall. They wait for better days. That's exactly what you can do. If you feel that you're losing everything, stand tall. Wait for better days to come. Focus on those better days to come. Even manifest all those better days to come. Don't give up too easily and say, ah, this is nothing. And you go in this downward spiral and you suck yourself completely down to the bottom of that spiral. That is not the way to get out of that dip. The way to get out of the dip is to start to focus on positivity, just like the trees are doing. You know, when their leaves fall, autumn mostly, it will start to rain a lot. So what will the tree do? It will start to focus on that rain. It will start to suck up all that water from the ground to grow new leaves. That is what you should do as well. The moment everything looks like it's falling apart, you should start to focus on the positive things you can take out of that life. And the more you start to focus on all those positivity and all those positive things, the more positivity you will draw into your life again. And you're standing tall, and you're learning new things, and at the end, everything will be positive again. Every little thing is gonna be all right. Don't worry about a thing, you know? Maybe he was singing about trees, I don't know. Probably about weed, because he loved to smoke weed as well. But he didn't worry about a thing, because he knew every little thing was gonna be all right. And that is really true. I've been in times of struggle as well. I have seen massive dips in my life, but I stood tall, I waited for better days to come, I started to focus on positivity, and at the end I started to feel better and better and better, all the way till where I'm now, feeling almost amazing every day. And still now, sometimes I need that dip to be able to understand what feeling amazing means and how important that is for people to create. That was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What did you think about the charts? What do you think about everything else? Let me know down below. See you tomorrow again.